That's right. I lost over 20% of my portfolio in the last 41 days. And I've learned something from it. I knew it in the long... Anyway, I don't play the short game well. I don't play it. And so I, I actually try to avoid it. And the short game is I don't know what's going to happen in the stock market tomorrow, today, next week, next month. I have no, no clue because it's, it's controlled by things that I don't know, I don't understand, and I don't care to learn. That is the details uh, what a financial analyst would know because this happened today, that's what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know those things. That's not of my nature to study those things, to figure out 200-day moving averages and how that's going to change, to understand the intricacies of the, the Federal Reserve and the Treasury and interest rates and how that's going to affect the stock market tomorrow. I don't get into that. I don't understand it. I don't care to do it. But I do pay, play the long game extremely well. And that's what I want to talk about today in this video so that you understand where I'm coming from and what I might be able to help you with. And then if that's not the game you want to play, you can find somebody else on YouTube or wherever uh, to help you. I'm here to help you do three things. Make good financial decisions, keep more of what you make by understanding our tax code, and build family wealth by accumulating money over the long term. I want to go into it in more depth and give you some insight as to how I might be able to help you. So stick with me here. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. I'm a retired financial advisor. I spent many years helping people uh, create a financial plan. And truly, a financial plan is a long-term plan. And it is basically, I thought of myself as a financial planner, similar to a doctor that I would sit down with you, determine what your life goals are financially, and look at your assets and your past history and your future, what you would like to have, and then creating a plan. Now, the invest, there were many sides of that plan, current financial needs, long-term needs that might, uh, and, and risk uh, avoidance, insurance products, uh, long-term care insurance, life insurance, and, and then there was estate planning. What happens when you die? But in the middle of that was investment planning. And our basic philosophy was go down the middle road, diversify, because I'm only going to meet with you probably four times a year. That means I'm only going to look at your portfolio four times a year. Now that I'm retired, I look at my portfolio every day, and I suspect you do as well. So a financial planning scheme of investing is not right for me anymore. I want greater returns. In, in the financial planning world, where I spent a long part of my life, I was happy with uh, just achieving what the S&P 500 did through diversification and avoiding the pitfalls. So, but now I want at least a 25% return on my, on my investment. But as I just told you in the last 41 days, I've lost 20% of my portfolio, but I'm not worried. And let me share with you why. I play the long game. I believe that I know what the world is going to look like, not next week, but next year and the subsequent nine years. I, I, I have a time frame that I try to figure out what the world's going to look like in 2030 and what it will look like as we move towards 2030 and how I should invest accordingly. Now, again, I study the world. I studied the economy. The first important book I read as I started my study was this, and this is uh, The Accidental Superpower by Peter Zeon. And it explains that the, that the most important 
thing that happened in my generation up until 2020 was World War II. And at the end of World War II, there was a meeting in Bretton Woods uh, and of the Allies, and the Allies said, this can never happen again. We can never have another Hitler come to power and, and bring the, the world on, uh, to the verge of destruction. And out of that meeting came the uh, the, the, the banking system that we know today, the world trading system that we know today, the defense of the seas that we know today, and the economy that we know today, and the functioning of that economy collectively. Um, then, just 12 months ago, we had a more important event occur, and that was the coronavirus. It not only brought Europe to its knees, it brought the world to its knees. And we again had a group of people go to Wunan, China to figure out what, why and how it actually happened. I don't think we know that, and I don't think we'll know that for three, four years. But we do know it can never happen again. So it will change the world that we know in, live in, in the next three to ten years, more drastically than the world has changed in the last 100 years. The other thing you need to know about this is demographics. And that is that the graying generation, my generation, people 60 and over, is the largest generation in the world. We, we, and we control in the world somewhere in the neighborhood of 75% of the assets. So we're the, not only the largest, but we're the richest. And we have our boats. We have our big, beautiful McMansions. We even have a second home on the beach. We might even have our own private jet. And we got all the money in the world. But there is one thing we don't have control of that we want control of. And that's this. That's that. Lifespan. I want, I'm 76 years old, I want to live at least until I'm 90, but I want quality of life. I don't want to be a vegetable sitting on the sofa watching daytime TV and sleeping 45% of my waking hours. How do you sleep 45%? You know what I mean just dozing off with my mouth open as a fly trap. I don't want to live that way, and neither do the rest of my generation. So we are going to make sure that we have quality of life up to 100. So how are we going to do that? Well, I would ask you, tomorrow morning when, when Squawk Box is on, I want you to watch the ticker underneath their talking heads. And I want you to count every time that you see a ticker that has something to do with biotech. Count it. You're going to find it's every third ticker. Every third ticker has something to do with biotech. They're small companies, but they're where the action is. Why is that? Why is it that everybody is interested in in um, biotech, because I want my life, my quality of life to be good. And I have controlled, I have controlled the economy since the day I was born, me and my generation. Just, just, just think back to the grocery store that your grandmother went to in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1944. There were two kinds of cereal on the shelf. There was Coke and Pepsi on the shelf. Go to a supermarket today. Count the number of cereals. Who created that? I did. I demanded it. My generation. Look, go down the, the, the soft drink aisle. See how many kinds of cans of sugar you can find. Who created that? I did. I demanded it. I want it, Mountain Dew. Give it to me. We have controlled every element of the economy 
for all of our life. And we aren't giving up. Now you say, no, the millennials are taking over. How many millennials are in Congress? How many Generation Xers are in Congress? We still control Congress. You noticed how old our last two presidents were? Are they part of the graying generation, even though this one of them bleaches their hair? Uh, yeah, they are. They're still controlling the world. So if you want to invest in the future, you got to know what the baby boomers want. And number one on their list of priorities is this. I'm not even going to say it. That's it. So if you will follow that like I do and see who's going to give me the cure for cancer, who's going to make sure I never get a, a virus again, just learn about biotech. And that's what I do. Roughly 14% of my portfolio is biotech. The other thing that I want is I want to get rid of those damn $200,000 worth of depreciating assets that sit in my garage. One of them's called a Porsche, and the other one's called a BMW, and all I do is throw money at them. Keep servicing them, keeping gassing in insurance. I want an auto autonomous automobile. I know that 45,000 people are going to get killed on the U.S. highways this next year. But if I can get the drivers out from behind the seat, I stand a chance to live longer. So that gray-haired lady in that Buick doesn't get me, or that teenager in that massive pickup truck doesn't run me into the ditch. I want autonomous automobiles, and I'm in control. I own the money. So I invest in autonomous vehicles, not electric vehicles. That's a stepping stone. And sure, I do own Tesla. It's my largest holding, but I own Tesla for another reason than the vehicle. I own it for the data. I own it because it's going to own the autonomous vehicle world. That's part of my long game. It's not a short game. You've seen what's happened to Tesla in the last couple of days. That's, that's immaterial. So I want autonomous, I want security. I want to be safe. And I have just seen, I'm not safe. I'm not safe. My supply chain is broken. When I wanted masks, I couldn't get them. I, I couldn't get them. When, when we needed respirators, we couldn't get them. Why? You know why. We don't make them. We don't make most things. 80% of our pharmaceuticals originate in a foreign country. And sometimes we're at odds with that foreign country. That's got to change. That's got to change. Most of the tech, the, 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 um, the, the technology I have is run on rare earth elements. We don't have any. Well, we have them, but we the company that did them went bankrupt just, a re just recently is back in business, but they can mine them, but they can't process them to get those rare earth elements that make this work and my camera to work. They got to come from that other country. That's got to change. We got to bring manufacturing back to the U.S. So I invest in robotics because that's another thing. And, and you can see other videos. I just did two of them on robotics. And 3D printing. We got to bring uh, the, the, the manufacturing element back to earth. So I have security. So that I know that if there is another pandemic and it's biological warfare, that we can survive. Because if it had been biological warfare, we lost. We lost. They would have said, give us Texas and we'll give you a vaccine. Why do they want Texas? Because they don't have any oil. You need to know these things. You need to read. Why do I know these things? I read this book. The future is faster than you think. It gave, it opened a window. It opened, pulled the curtain back from the window and I could look into it and I can see what the future is going to hold and what it's going to look like. 
So I know where to invest, not for next week, not, not for tomorrow morning, but for 2023 through, 20, to, through 2030. I know where to invest. That's where my portfolio is. And as again, I said, in the last 41 days, I lost 20%. But I am confident that my VIP portfolio by 2030 will 10x. I am confident because I know what the future holds. Then the next thing I want is quality of life. I want my every need taken care of. And that is going to be done through artificial intelligence, machine learning, and big data. Okay? Well, who owns the big data? If you read this book, this is the big nine. They own the big data. You can see the names of them. If you can't see them, it's IBM, Alibaba, Chinese, Microsoft, Tencent, Chinese, Apple, Baidu, Chinese, Facebook, Amazon, and Google. You know those names. They make up, at least the U.S. end of it, over 50% of my portfolio. Why? Because I play the long game. I play the long game. I just did a video, uh, you see it, um, last couple days, that Jeff Bezos is moving into my house. What? Jeff Bezos is making my first robot. Man, he's going to make that robot see me, talk to me, do things for me. He's going to become my personal assistant. Yeah. Which is going to make the quality of my life better. How's he going to do that? Big data. Big data. He's been collecting anything and everything about me. He knows what kind of peanut butter I like. He knows that I eat yogurt and apple and granola every day, every weekday for lunch. He knows that. So he can fill my pantry. Jeff's moving into my house, at least his robot, Vista. I play the long game. I know where we're going. As long as I know where we're going and I can figure out who's going to get me there, I win. I win. So how do I, how do I, with this one mind, make all this work? I don't use one mind. Right now I got 18,000 minds working for me. That's a bigger, that's a bigger investment analyst department than Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, any of them. 18,000. At bestofusinvestors.com, come give me your name, give me your email address, and join our tribe and become part of the 18 going to 50,000. That basically say, Carrie, have you considered this, as I just got a, a, an email this morning about a, um, a where are they, uh, S Sweden? No, Switzerland, a Switzerland robot company. Been around since the 1800s. So they gave me that name. Would I have ever found that name on my own? No, no. But because I play the long game, I can do the research. I can then do, after I do that research, I can turn it over to our investment committee. Seven people who get together once a month and choose a stock, which is directed by the 18,000. We analyze it in depth and then tell you what we know about it. So that's Best of Us Investors. That's Carrie Grinkmeyer. That's some of the things I read so that I have an advantage over the rest of the world. Um, I, it, 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 it just puzzles me that some people say, well, I'll just go and uh, play it by ear and see what happens. Uh, it doesn't work that way. If you're going to win, you got to be the smartest guy at the poker table. And, and if, if, if the poker table is playing faster than you can keep up with, you lose. So I don't play that game. I invest in the future. And the future is faster than you think. Join us. Be a part of us. This is where the money's made. And this is where you win. Talk to you later.